Hello folks, it's Echo here, and today we're going to be talking about all things Alpha 21. And we're going to talk about the confirmed features for Alpha 21, the speculated features for Alpha 21, and then finally some of the things that just may have been dropped. Stick around for the end of the video and I'll give my conclusions on timing, the beta, gold, and console versions. Alpha 21 will boast new points of interest. You can see here a new Hospital and Navis game. Additionally, they're updating some of the previous POIs. You can see here Trader Bob's in its former incarnation and then see what it's transformed into now. Vehicle models that you see around the map are going to be updated as well as additional new ones being added. Quite a few questions from the community asking if any of these would be drivable and at this point in time it seems like that is a negative. Random world generation will receive a minor improvement with biome percentage sliders. This will allow you to create single biome maps but will still fall far from king gen or nitrogen in terms of flexibility. Learn by looting, not to be confused with learn by doing from older alphas, will completely change game progression as it relates to crafting. In Alpha 20, purchasing skills allows you to create higher quality items and unlock certain crafting recipes. In addition to this, it increases the tier that you're going to create. So in this situation, we can craft up to quality four shotguns. So if we come over here into crafting, you'll note that whether it's a pump shotgun, a pipe shotgun, or a double barrel, they are all crafted at tier four based off of that skill acquisition that we just got. In Alpha 21, they will be separating these out into perks and skills. So the ability to craft and unlock any of the recipes are gone from the actual perk, which we are looking at now, and instead will be governed by a separate crafting skill. The only way to increase these crafting skills is through finding magazines associated with that specific skill. For each one red, the crafting skill increases by one. So to break down the table on the right from Joel, you have tiers of shotguns and then you have quality levels of shotguns. So at different breakpoints, it's going to unlock the different tiers. So pipe, double barrel, pump, auto. So those will unlock at one. Once you get 11 magazines, the double barrel unlocks at 27, the pump shotgun unlocks, and then at 60, the auto shotgun unlocks. So in addition to unlocking the different tiers of shotguns, your crafting skill is also going to determine the quality of the shotgun that you produce. The overall idea was to slow progression. So as you collect from one up to 11 magazines associated with shotguns, then you will change from a quality one to a quality five pipe shotgun that you can produce. Only then once you hit 11, will you unlock the next tier of shotgun. Now, when you go to produce that first double barrel shotgun, unfortunately, you're only going to be at a quality one until you can collect more magazines and scale that up. Speaking of which, magazines can be found in the usual spots that you'd look for schematics. So mailboxes, filing cabinets, bookshelves are all fair game. Additionally, if you wanted to focus on a specific area of crafting growth, you could go over to say a working stiff tools and you're going to have a higher likelihood of finding magazines associated with tools. You could go over to the cafe here and you would get magazines associated with food and cooking. And then lastly, this passing gas, you could go to find vehicle magazines. If you're looking for a ton of mags, go check out any POI that has a lot of bookcases as paper has been replaced with magazines. So what if swinging clubs is your thing and you just can't find any club magazines? Buying perks for a specific item will have the effect of increasing the chances of both magazines as well as associated parts for that item to drop. Lastly, all schematics with the exception of mods have been removed. I personally really like this system and think that it will smooth out progression. My only concern here is that they also need to ratchet down what you get in terms of loot and quest rewards to make this all make sense. But let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments below. POI designs will continue to be enhanced with the addition of environmental hazards. In this situation, we've got a gas pipe here spitting out fire in front of the door that blocks your pathway forward. And on the level above, you'll be able to find a switch to be able to turn that off and move forward through the POI. Seeing fire here also harkens back to Joel talking about potentially having a fire trap in the future. I'm not hopeful, but it would be incredible. Also curious to see if there's any other environmental hazards they're going to have. Alpha 21 is going to bring us the double doors that were touted back in the Alpha 20 dev streams. In these, you had a situation where doors as they take damage would actually expose a center portion that you can shoot through. Additionally, there were upright double doors that I know most of the community is really excited to see. Next up is the long awaited water overhaul. What we know about this is that there will be no swimming animations, no water creatures, and no infinite water. And we also know it probably won't look anything like this. In my dream world, we would have something similar to Minecraft with better animations in terms of the water. But in reality, it sounds like the infinite water source is going to cause a lot of problems in terms of resources. So rivers and waterfalls are out of the question. The other vision that I had was hopefully being able to see some water POIs and maybe a raft. But realistically, I'm hoping that they just fix things like this so that when you place one block, this doesn't happen. 
Alpha 21 will bring us some reworked armor sets. Here we've got the new military armor. This is the primary armor that I typically run with. This looks fantastic. It has a much more gritty and overall coherent aesthetic to it versus the current one that feels kind of like a G.I. Joe character from the 80s. After seeing the gorgeous implementation of the military armor, the iron armor leaves something to be desired. This set looks kind of like the love child of a medieval hobo and road warrior. Let me know what your thoughts are. Next, we have the new raider armor. This design seems to have a lot more of a uniform design pattern than the iron armor did. I definitely think there's some good elements to this one. One of the parts that I am curious about are the blue bits here and wondering if you can apply dyes to those or whether those will remain blue. Similarly, I'm curious on the iron armor if the red breastplate will also remain red when you apply dyes. In earlier alphas, you were able to walk right up to any body of water with an open hand and just reach down and drink directly out of the water. And it would be the same as drinking murky water instead of punching it. This is back in Alpha 21, as well as a number of other changes to drinking water. First big change is that you will no longer be able to loot boiled water. Additionally, empty jars have been completely removed from the game. Want to try to craft snowball water? Nope, that's gone too. Additionally, a cooking pot will now be required for the boiled water recipe, and the glue recipe has been modified to require boiled water. These changes will reduce the availability of boiled water in the game and will push us to work harder for survival. In order to fight this growing thirst, Alpha 21 will bring in a new workstation called the Dew Collector. This will be the lowest tier workstation and the first to be unlocked by reading Forge Ahead magazines. Functionally, the Dew Collector will produce three bottles of pure water over the course of a game day. Roland mentioned that these would be resource intensive and that they require a uncraftable part to be able to make. The expectation is that over the course of a playthrough that you'd likely have multiple of these around your base. So that is everything that has been confirmed in the dev diaries. Let's talk about what is speculated given some of the comments there. Bandits have been a long-awaited feature in Seven Days to Die, and Alpha 20 these didn't quite make the cut because of the character overhaul that was going to be a dependency to get these in place. That link has been removed and bandit development will move forward independently. There are plans for three types of bandits, a melee bandit, a ranged, and then a combo slash boss bandit. Currently we don't have specifics on each of these types, but we do know a lot about the generalized behavior. All bandits will be hostile, there might be plans for friendly bandits and even factions later, but currently they are all hostile. Next. They can all jump and crawl through 1.5 meter spaces, similar to zombies. They will also be able to attack other zombies, similar to how animals do. Likewise, they'll also attack animals. They cannot place items or drive vehicles. They have the same basic pathing as zombies, and they will not loot any of your stuff or attack your base. They will destroy things if there's something in between you and them, essentially. Bandits will be able to open doors, so no silly door games of open the door, hit the bandit, close the door. Bandits will also be able to carry at least melee weapons at this stage, though what they drop will be a gimped version of what the actual weapon is. Currently, there is no dismemberment planned for bandits, and this next one is super interesting. Bandits of the same faction will have coordination. This is one of two comments that I saw on factions. The other one referenced the possibility of neutral or friendly bandits in the future. I don't think either of these are likely to come to fruition in Alpha 21, though. The bandits will be smart enough to hide in cover and then ambush you. So to set expectations in terms of the numbers of bandits that we'll see in the world, developers have to strike a balance between the higher computational needs of the bandits versus the existing animals and zombies in the world. So practically speaking, we're looking at two to three being the common engagement and five being a heavier group of bandits. Performance is near and dear to my heart as Seven Days to Die often struggles even with hefty rigs. In March, I was disappointed when I saw this note from Fatal, but then I saw a teaser that might help out in the cities. Then in June, we received confirmation that this was indeed in place. Place, so hopefully we see this coming to Alpha 21. Additionally, these new windows will be available for us to use in builds and have some unique flexibility in terms of how they can be painted. There are two new quests in the works for Alpha 21. Unfortunately, we don't know much about them. This cryptic message from Roland is about all we've seen from the Fun Pimp staff, though someone on the forums did mention that they were digging around and found implications that there might be a defense quest kind of a defend the node until something happens. Personally, I love the idea of a defense quest and I'm really curious what the other one is. If you have any ideas, let me know down in the comments. The last item on the speculated list is an amazing set of new HD graphics that was done in conjunction with Tekagon. There are over 50 images, so I'm gonna fly through here as fast as I can. If you've been enjoying this, please drop a like on the video and subscribe if you're interested in more information on Alpha 21 as it comes up. And while you're down there, drop a comment and let me know which of these assets you like the best. 
I really like what they've done with the new doors and then the industrial light rework was super sharp. I really love what they've done with the bookshelves there and I'm looking forward to adding those to my base personally. The radio makes me wonder if they're adding something associated to one of the quests as well as the sat link that they had there. The speaker got a nice little overhaul here. They've added a lot of new street decorations, the garbage cans, the street rails, and then we get the combo VHS TV player. Fantastic. New iron doors, walls for medical wards. And then we've got a hot water heater here, lantern reworks, a ton of booze, and this gorgeous upright piano, which I can see putting in like a recreational area of your base. This thing's got a good overhaul there. All of these new lights look really, really sharp. Server racks might be my favorite thing that they added that I didn't know I wanted. And then they gave me the porta potties. Tons of stuff you can see here they're putting in for POI, so I'm going to be curious to see the new ones that come out. There's a new wheelchair graphic, and finally a rework of the spotlight. There were two pretty substantial features that were planned for Alpha 20, and both of those got pushed to Alpha 21, but where are they? Anyone who was around for the Alpha 20 development probably recalls the outfit sets. The idea behind this is that you would have thematic sets that were focused on a specific action. Think like mining or crafting and these were not well received by the community in general no one wanted to have to wear a full set of something and they didn't want to have to switch sets to get the right perks for the right situation there's a secondary component to this that really should be a totally different feature this replace uma system with an in-house custom system this is talking about updating the player model and this is something that i desperately like to see the player animations leave much to be desired you've got the weird jumping without bending your legs thing there's also the fact that our zombie brethren have gotten an HD update and we haven't. That just makes me angry. Overall, I think Alpha 21 is shaping up pretty nicely. I hope they slip some of the stuff from the speculated over into the confirmed list pretty soon. Thematically, I like how we're slowing down progression and introducing a little bit more of the survival aspect back into the game. It's interesting to me that a lot of the mechanics that I'm seeing them introduce seem to be similar to Darkness Falls or Undead Legacy, but I'm sure that's just coincidence. There's been pretty strong indication that this will not be the last alpha and that likely we're going to have a few more pop in before we hit to a beta slash gold stage, which sadly means we're probably still a year out before thinking about bringing in our console brethren. In terms of Alpha 21 release timing, I've consulted my local fortune teller and she has interpreted all the signs in the form of vague comments and she has decided. Just get the fuck out of here. Well, Trader Rec has spoken. Echoes out. Special thanks goes out to my patrons, I couldn't do it without you. And if you enjoyed this, consider dropping a like and subscribe or click on one of the crazy videos here. Take care all.